I'm in studio today with Will Graham, grandson of Billy Graham of the Billy Graham Crusades that many people are familiar with. He has a uh, two-day event this weekend in Idaho Falls, the Look Up Tour. We spoke to you earlier this year, so thanks for coming back to talk to us. Yeah, it's great to be back in, here in Idaho Falls. I think, so the last time you were here, it was snowing. Today it's raining. So your whole experience of Idaho so far is yeah, clouds, clouds, and, you know, clouds and moister. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, my nickname is Chief Dark Cloud. So that's what my friends call me just to tease me because I, I always seem to bring the rain wherever I go. It's always raining. So. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about this event this weekend. It's the Look Up Tour. Uh, there's two events on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then there's an event on Sunday. Do you want to yeah. talk about what's what's going to be? Yeah, going it on? starts at three o'clock this Saturday. And so what's really exciting about what's going on, this is going to be a kids program. And everything I'm going to talk about is already paid for. It's free. There's no ticket required. It's just show up and enjoy it. It's, uh, people say, well, what's the catch? There is no catch. Uh, this is a free event. Like it, the, and it's been donated by the churches and donors of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. They've already paid the bills. They've paid all the bills. This is a f totally free event. Um, and uh, so this is given to the, the whole community of Idaho Falls. Everybody's invited, and uh, there's no ticket requirements. You just walk in the door, and, and you're welcome. I mean, like, you're welcome to come on in. And so, uh, but it starts at 3 o'clock on Saturday with uh, what we call it our kids' program, our children's program. And we're going to have bounce houses. We'll have probably face painting. I, I can't remember all the activities, but uh, we're going to have a children's program. It's going to be a great video that we got this thing planned. It's something that we made in-house. It's an incredible video. It's a fun eye-catching. It's basically like a video game, um, like cartoon video game uh, based on virtual reality. And so it's a neat little thing that the kids can watch. I mean, it's, it's a wholesome program, but it helps them to start understanding spiritual things. And, uh, and it's going to talk about uh, having a personal relationship with God, breaking God's rules uh, is not good. Like when we lie, when we steal, uh, things like that when we bully other people that's all wrong um, but then then I'll come up at the very end and just tell basically how kids can have a relationship with Jesus Christ and uh, the invitations for the parents the the kids the grandparents and one of the neatest thing is we've seen usually like we have all these kids because we're we want to see kids come to know Christ put you know put their faith in Jesus Christ and what's it always happens we got a grandmother or granddaddy that gets saved at a kids program because they're there with their grandkids or something and they get their life uh, right with the Lord. Um, so then uh, from about three o'clock and then around seven o'clock, we're gonna go into a, a student night and this is gonna be geared toward your teenagers and stuff like that. And, uh, and I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna, we're gonna have a great band. Matter of fact, uh, even in the morning or in the afternoon with the kids program, we're gonna have Wren Collective. Wren Collective is an incredible Christian band. Uh, they're very, very popular. You'll hear a lot of their music on Christian radio and stuff like that, and it's great music. They're going to be there for the kids program, uh, which I've never seen them do one. That's going to be interesting. And then they're going to be there for the students that night. That's going to be incredible. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to give a message geared toward for the young people uh, there that night. On Sunday at 5 o'clock, we're going to have a, we call it family night, and it's really for the whole family. And uh, we're going to have two uh, great people there singing. One is uh, David Crowder, a very well-known Christian artist. And we have a, another lady, uh, Christine uh, Clario. So we've been working with all the churches here in eastern Idaho, including some in Wyoming, uh, to come to be a part of this. So we're real excited and I can't believe it's already this weekend. So yeah, that'll be over the two days. We'll have some information at eastidahonews.com where you know we'll have the rundown of the specifics and times and all of that information. Um, Will, I wanted to ask you, um, so you're coming to a state where there's a high percentage of members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yep. Um, how have you been received as you've come to Idaho? Well, uh, I've never, I haven't had any problems um, here or anywhere I've gone, to be honest. Um, um, but we've had a great time here. Um, you know, uh, even with, uh, with the Church of Latter-day Saints, I haven't had any issues with them. I mean, I want to be honest, I do believe differently. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I'll tell you one thing, um, I've always been very impressed with the Church of Latter-day Saints in the sense of uh, their commitment to their faith, how they send missionaries out around the world. Um, and, uh, and to be honest, there's been a, quite a few of them that have 
uh, helped support my granddaddy over the years in the sense of uh, uh, they just like my granddaddy and I've always been appreciative of that as well. Your family has a history of friendship with members of the LDS Church. Mm -hmm. Your grandfather was good friends with Bill Marriott, the founder of the Marriott Hotel chain. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Uh, J.W. Marriott, he was a good friend of my granddaddy's. Uh, would travel a lot with my grandfather, and uh, um, they were very kind to my grandfather on a personal level. And what do I mean by that is that uh, they allowed my granddaddy to stay at Marriott hotels for free, and uh, a lot of po people didn't know that. And um, they were very generous to my granddaddy, uh, looked after my granddaddy, especially J.W. Marriott. Uh, his son carried on that tradition, his grandson carried on that tradition as well, up until my granddaddy died. Uh, we, we all, as a family, we always joked, because it was a little card, you know, anything charged to that card, the family would take care of. Mm -hmm. And it was, when I say a card, it was like a, your hotel room and stuff like that. And, Right. We always joked that, that when my granddad died, that's what we wanted to inherit. <laughs> you know, that, that Marriott car. Yeah. But uh, no, we're very grateful for the, the Marriott family. They were very kind to my grandfather. And um, matter of fact, my grandfather would do uh, Mr. J.W. Marriott's funeral. Uh, he would speak and do the funeral. Uh, Mr. Marriott asked him to do that. Uh, that's how close of friends they were. Um, uh, I think that was in 1985 when uh, J.W. Marriott passed away. We don't see that happening much, you know. Uh, right. But that was one of those unique uh, friendships. That, my granddad had a lot of relationships with that. He, Mr. Marriott being LDS was not uh, an unusual thing. He had a lot of people across different faiths, different uh, political beliefs and stuff like that that he was very close and friends with. And uh, I hope that's something that I can continue as well, that I have friendships on all sides of the line. Of course. And uh, make good friends. And, uh, but, uh, you know, my goal is always to preach the gospel. It's just not to make friends, but I want to preach the gospel. What I see in the Bible, that's what's important to me. And I want to continue that, just like my granddaddy did, was faithful to preaching the gospel. And uh, God uh, gives us favor with people. Yeah. And, uh, I'm very grateful for that, uh, what God did through my granddaddy. And I hope he'll do the same through me as well. This is an interesting time that we live in where people are struggling with their identity, mm -hmm. uh, who they are, finding purpose and meaning in life. Mm -hmm. What is the, what's the antidote for people who are struggling today? Well, I think a lot of people want to, we kind of want to find things the way we want them to find. In other words, I believe that we've kind of made ourselves, in, I don't take this literally, but we kind of make ourselves into our own gods. Mm -hmm. Like we decide what's right. We decide what's true. Uh, but we're not the source of truth. And what I'm saying is that uh, truth, we try to make truth, we relativize it and instead make it, this is relative to us, it's your truth. And it's, in a sense, as soon as you say, uh, you put a clear clarification on truth like oh that's your truth this is my truth like so your and my when you put that clarification in there it's no longer truth and then this is the same thing that happened in the bible uh it says i mean in the during the times of uh, the judges in the bible the it said they did everything that was right in their own eyes <laughs> i mean and that's what we do today we do everything that's right in our own eyes in our own eyes this we feel like this is right and it leads down us to destruction, destructive path in life. One of the greatest questions ever asked in human history was done by Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor who would crucify Jesus. And he said, what is truth? And that's what I think a lot of people are struggling with is that same question. Just like he struggled with it, uh, people today struggle with it. And they want to come up with truth in their own eyes and do what's right in their own eyes. And I believe that there's only one way. There's only one truth. <laughs> And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I want to preach him and preach his message.